Chris, what is our second main topic today? This one comes from Jay Mayer. Hey, John and crew. While we knew the Mortal Kombat sequel was underway, it's been announced that Simon McQuoid, McQuoid? How do you say his last McQuoid? name? McQuoid. McQuoid will return to direct the second film. I'm interrelated to see what they will do with the installment. What do you think of the director returning? Thanks and have a great day. All right. Thanks a lot for sending that in. And I, I'm not going to lie to you. I did not love the Mortal Kombat movie. I, I, I remember... Ray, me, and our buddy Ryan, we went to some mall somewhere to go see it. I can't even remember. I think we went to Ontario, I think. Went to Ontario to go watch it. And I, I, there were some redeeming things about it. I didn't hate it. There, I mean, the the Scorpion Sub-Zero fight in it is awesome. Yeah. I mean, absolutely awesome. Like, I remember even just the one shot was in the trailer, right? He s slashes the guy <laughs> freezes the blood that flies out of him into a spike and then stabs him with his own blood. It's one of the greatest things I've ever seen put to film. I mean, it was absolutely awesome. Unfortunately, overall, the movie was a bit of a letdown. Um, but, you know, even though it didn't even make $100 million, they considered it a bit of a success because, I mean, the movie was made for a $25 million budget, which is less than what Rob Zombie made the monsters for but uh, i i digress so they made that movie for like 25 million dollars so for for what they did like 80 something million is not bad this comes to us from the folks over at deadline who write the following after the most recent mortal Kombat pick overachieved at the box office new line is ready to get back in the arena on a sequel sources tell deadline that simon mccoy is set to return as director for the follow-up to the 2021 action adventure hit mortal Kombat was mccoy's feature directorial debut you can sort of tell, uh, and was released simultaneously in theaters and on HBO Max during the pandemic in April 2021. The feature opened number one at the box office and ranks among the top feature titles ever on HBO Max since the platform launched. While some point to Fast 9 or A Quiet Place Part 2 as picks that led the crowds back to the theaters post-pandemic, Mortal Kombat was one of the early features to take a crack to gauging audiences' interest in returning to theaters, and the results surprised many. So, I mean... While I think, I think, Ray, you may want to double check this. Mm -hmm. I think overall worldwide, I think the movie made 84 million bucks. But it was in the heart of a pandemic. And it was being played on HBO Max at the same time. So you got, you got to take all that into consideration. But again, I think it was only made for like 25 million bucks. So even if you take a $20 million marketing campaign into account, the movie pretty much just in theaters broke even and maybe even made a little, a couple of bucks. Maybe. That's not bad. What do I think about them bringing the director back? I would say this. For a first directorial effort to tackle something like Mortal Kombat and make something that wasn't terrible, that's that's not bad. That's a stepping stone. That's, that's something you can build off of. I don't necessarily think it's good for either the franchise or for him, for him to be the director of now the sequel. I think the best thing for him would have been to move on now to do another type of project or whatever. And I think maybe it would have been better for the franchise to get a fresh approach because I personally, just for me, I didn't think the first one worked great. But there are many people who loved it, and that's great. So, yeah, I'm not sure why they're making another one, but they are, and uh, let's see how it turns out. Anyway, Chris, you hear about this. What do you think about the decision? I mean, the first Mortal Kombat, if you were there just for the bonkersness and the blood, it delivered on that. But if you wanted some, like, character development or anything like that, maybe you didn't from your Mortal Kombat movie. This was fine. It was fine. However, I am with you of, I'm wondering how they're going to elevate the sequel. Mm -hmm. Because we have to grow from that, right? We do have to go from, yeah, it was really, really cool when we killed people with their own frozen blood. But what else can we do? Because the effects can't just be a crutch that you lean on. Because then you just find yourself, kind of like how I watch the Star Wars prequels, I sit there for those fight scenes, and then when there's dialogue, I get up and I refill my drink. I want to make sure I'm fully engaged in this film. So I'm really, really hoping that this time around that the director really puts more effort into that storytelling so that I'm not just there for some cool fight scenes. Because if I want that, I can go play the video games and I can murder as many people as I want. <laughs> We want to take a moment and thank the sponsor of today's video, Storyblocks. Guys, I have been an enthusiastic fan and user of Storyblocks 
for years. I go to them whenever I'm in need of content creation assets like royalty-free music, video clips, or templates for my creative projects, ranging anywhere from little editorial videos to my very own full feature documentary. Storyblocks helps you bring your stories, videos, and projects to life without sacrifices due to time, budget, or access to resources. They have over 1 million different story assets ranging from stock videos, audio and music, an in-browser video editor, and they feature pre-designed templates, animations, and outros. Storyblocks uses an affordable subscription model and their unlimited access plans offers, well, unlimited video and audio downloads rather than a costly pay-per-clip model. With Storyblocks, you'll be able to create more content and more importantly, better content, all while using a subscription plan that fits your budget, utilizing unlimited downloads of demand-driven and diverse content. So if you're interested in upping your content creation game, head over to www.storyblocks.com slash campia and get started today. That's www.storyblocks.com slash campia. Rob, what do you think? Well, <laughs> The problem with the Mortal Kombat franchise is it's it really is kind of a narrative dead end because all you want to do is see people fight. Yeah. Like, that's what I want. Like, I would literally watch, if you stage awesome fights, I would watch fights for 90 minutes. If you had special effects laden, awesome martial arts fights, because I don't expect some Game of Thrones-esque political intrigue in the storyline. I just want to see dudes... I want to see fatalities, John. That's what I want to see. <laughs> I want to see people ripping other guys' spines out of. Yeah. I want to see and girls throwing it back at killing, him. Yeah, whatever. And I think so. There's a narrative problem with this franchise in that we all want it to get to a certain place. However, that said, there was stuff in there like the scene. I think it's at the beginning of the movie in, in the village when there, there's that that attack on that village. At right. The that was pretty cool. When the like, guy loses his wife and. Yeah, yeah. I like uh, that set up the <clears throat> the story. I liked that. That was really good. I that thought was, was good. Yeah, I it was thought a good it was start. a really a great scene, really well staged. You know, I love samurai movies and stuff. So I, I was, I liked that. I thought that setup was great, and I think I would welcome more of that, more of a narrative thrust, like like make it more of a throwback to Chinese and, and Japanese movies in the seventies and eighties. You know, there's there's so many of them, so many martial arts films. I, I would welcome more of that, mm -hmm. as long as lots of fatalities and lots of, of fights yeah. but they got to kind of parcel out it's got to be parceled out string it together for me a little bit you know <laughs> you know when i worked i was a story analyst for joel silver early on in my career and we had to write these things the called same. whammo charts and whammo charts were basically charts of a screenplay and it, we had to have whammos like every 10 page pages whether it was a sex scene or violence or action and i think a mortal kombat movie needs to be whammo charted out mm. because mm. i need maybe every seven minutes a whammo and if they do that i could be happy with it but, but you know you bring up the thing about you you're not looking for game of thrones right no but why not i and and, and, and hear what i'm good saying that's a good no i know what you, like, a good question why can't you have something that has all the whammo and put in some really compelling there because you, you talk about that first scene right yeah like if you, if I had to, if I got an emergency came up and I had to leave the theater after that first scene, I would have thought, man, this, this is how you do a Mortal Kombat movie, right? Mm -hmm. Right. You put in some real intrigue. You got family drama going on. You got revenge and you got some great action, man. If they carry that through for the rest of the movie, this is going to be something special. Like, I think sometimes we as audience members, and I'm, I'm guilty of this. I think we sometimes sell ourselves short and say, well, I mean, I'm not going in there for Shakespeare granted, but I think they could have used a little bit more of that in it. Like if they, you said, Chris, I think very well that if they'd paid a little bit more attention to making sense of the story, mm -hmm. because when you look at Mortal Kombat, the, the basic mythology, like out, out, what is it called? Outworld yeah. or, or whatever. Like when yeah. you look at all of that. Outer and, realms. Or outer something. realms. Yeah. And you even look at what's going on politically there. You have the building blocks for something really cool if somebody wants to tell the definitive story of it. You're absolutely right. Oh, so, oh go ahead. Jeff. Oh, no, go ahead. Oh, I was just saying, there, there was, there's only one problem with the movie, and I, and I think it's just because really? of that Really? Only one? <laughs> that, that character, Cole, he just didn't click with me. If they saved them for the future uh, movies, like introduced them later and just built the world first with Scorpions, Sub-Zero. I mean, I even like what they did with... Uh, Kung Lao and Liu Kang. Mm -hmm. I thought all of them were great. I mean, 
it's just that there's that one scene where they have that football huddle and they look like they're in that white the heavens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That scene just completely left a bad taste in my mouth. I, I don't question. I didn't like it at all. That wasn't that the, wasn't no. the uh the burrito. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a question for you. Because I was, I honestly I don't know I mean I I mean I used to play Mortal Kombat a lot when it was an arcade game. But yeah. well like that that character, the main character was not in any of the games, right? I, he's he's supposed to be in like some lore. I don't know if it's comic books or something like but he's, that. But he hasn't been. A, see, yeah. that was always my question when people would bring that up. And I'd say, really? It's like, how do you have like a decades long IP, legacy IP like Mortal Kombat with all these characters? You you never have to have played a Mortal Kombat game to know the name Johnny Cage. You don't have to know any, like any of that, right? And so let's make a new Mortal Kombat movie. Great. Who's the main character? Eddie. <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> Kevin. Moto Kevin. <laughs> uh, Kevin. Kevin. Give me Mortal Johnny Kevin. Cage. Give me Baraka yeah. in the next one. I'm all in. You get Mortal you get Kevin my money. Here. Baraka and Johnny Cage, that's all you need. Let's <laughs> let's make it right this next one. I don't anyway, know. that's just kind of my thought of that. All right, guys, look, question is for you. What do you think about this? Hey, listen, I'm also a big proponent of Doing one thing, learning from the mistakes you made, build upon the things you did well, and make something even better. Maybe that's the case here. Are you looking forward to a second Mortal Kombat? If so, why? Jump on down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts.